Howdy, I was going to do uh, one last quick video real quick for uh, going over how to make wards for, or sorry, auras for uh, paladins. Uh, so we have a paladin in our my campaign that I'm doing next that was really a good test for me for making making abilities and, and effects because they're ones that I hadn't made before. Um, so I uh, they're doing a uh, paladin that does the Oath of the Agents which actually has a lot of very beneficial oaths for uh, the players to get a lot of the de defensive things to keep them uh, keep them whole. So for the Aura of Warding, uh, one that was a little a little trickier for me to think about at first. So it um, allows them to be able to, anybody within 10 feet, um, and yourself, you have resistance to damage from spells. So there isn't really a way that I've figured out a way to code... Um, an aura to take effect when a person's within range. So what I found was the easiest way of doing it. Um, so I automatically just applied all the effects for her character um, to already apply all of the damage resistances. And uh, they also get to add three, uh, which is its charisma modifier to saving throws. So, um, so the best way that I figured out a way to code it was to create an effect um, so I, I dragged the effect over from the character, and then I modified it to, to do the dynamic active effect. So in this effect, the way I have it set up, um, it will, whenever it gets added to them, the effect was initially suspended, and it'll transfer the effect to the character when it gets on them. And I just have it the auras of protection and warding, because both auras activate within when they're in 10 feet of that user. So because... It's, if you click damage resistance to all, it will add the uh, unfortunate effect of doing, uh, when you go down to traits uh, and damage resistance, uh, it lists everything. So the one that screws it up is the non-magical physical and then the bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. So if you do all, it will apply those effects, which you're only wanting it to do for spells. So uh, it's a little harder to code so I had to do each individual type of damage to be able to take it into effect and for the ability saves I just did bonus ability saves and then the custom three um, and that adds the plus three which at first I wasn't sure if it was taking effect or not and then once I activate the ability you can actually notice the difference so for example we'll add this guy here uh, he is our cleric and he has a plus four strength plus one to dex, plus three to con, and negative one intelligence, and plus zero to charisma. Uh, he currently does not have any extra effects from uh, this ability yet, so we'll add this ability to him. So we'll uh, pull his features up, and uh, he doesn't have it yet, so we'll add it. And so when he goes to his effects, it will show up in there. And so say if he's here so he's more than 10 feet away so within here he wouldn't get the effect of it uh, but when he moves within 10 feet of her uh, I made that a wall so when he moves within 10 feet of her he could go to his effects and activate the the uh, the aura of warding oh this is blocking it sorry uh, then he can activate the aura of warding and you'll notice he uh, his saves went up but his uh his uh, checks still stay the same because he had the negative one, but now he's got a plus two. Uh, he's now got a plus seven to the strength save, and then so we'll toggle it off so you can see the see the difference. Uh, so yeah, negative one, negative one, plus three, plus three, plus one, plus one, plus four, plus four, and you'll notice before we go off. So he has none of the damage immunities, and once he activates the ability, he'll have all of the damage. Uh, abilities he'll have the resistance to all the, the spell effects that would potentially hit him uh, that was a uh, that was probably one of the harder things it was for me to think about how to code because I just combined the two abilities because it would just be the easiest way to make it easiest to turn on and off that way you don't have to turn off multiple abilities at the same time because that's it's really time consuming and it's something that I'm not going to have them activate unless they're in combat because otherwise you'd be turning it on and off constantly especially as characters are moving so especially in combat it'll be something either I'll have them activate on their own or I'll just do it in the background um, some other effects with uh, with her so um, she is actually uh, a wanti so she had the uh, magic resistance which uh, 
made it so that she is, has advantages on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. So uh, for that one, I did uh, I flagged for uh, I did the uh, flag mini coil. It was a grant advantage against uh, attack uh, range spell attacks and melee spell attacks, and I had it grant advantage. And there, you can also code it for uh, because the way the way that it's it's verbalized or the way that it's, it's you know it, it shows uh, you advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Uh, depending on the spell effect, that will trigger uh, to roll the the bonus save. But of course, there are some other saves that are more ability checks. Um, so I was I was looking at all the different different effects, and you know it's it's hard to say what some things are considered magical or not. Um, so I didn't add just pure, just uh, add, you know, just ad ad advantage on all saving throws. Uh, and she also gets the automatic plus, plus three because she gets her charisma fire from her own aura of protection. Uh, and then divine health is one that you can get from the, uh, the dynamic active effects that actually has the SRD that actually has some of the ones that are pre, uh, pre done already. They had... Uh, let's see, I don't think it was in this one. I think it was in the, uh, I'm trying to see which ones it was, uh, it's not in the macro one. Um, I want to say it's in the, no, it wasn't that one either. Um, I know it's in one of these. I'm just, I'm drawing a blank on, uh, which one, which one it is at the, off at the top of my head at the moment. Uh, but I mean, it's the Paladin was much a it was a much harder one for me to code than some of the other ones because some of them are pretty straightforward. Um, I also with her with this character they um, are they uh, pretty much say that they're kind of a minimalist in terms of what they actually like to carry. So when I actually did the module for uh, inventory plus that lets you. Uh, actually create and add new uh, it, it lets you create and add additional uh, compartment slots and you can create custom categories uh, I just made a backpack category and then I went very specific with you know it's a backpack that holds exactly 30 pounds of gear and that a bedroll and a coil of rope can be held outside the backpack backpack and so I made the backpack be able to hold exactly 30 pounds of gear and I, you know, I had the bedroll and the um, grappling hook that they have attached to their rope be no weight and added those to the outside. Um, they like having, you know, a belt pouch that they, you know, can access, uh, you know, at all times to be able to be able to reach into their pouch to be able to grab a potion of healing. And so I went real in depth in making theirs as, you know, especially to the way that they like it and how they like to... Uh, have abilities applied so I was also having troubles too and I still have not found a great way to do a macro for divine smite some of the ones that come preloaded and I'm I'm not the greatest with macros yet so I did not find a great way to you know get some of the macros to work some of them work and you can have them and they'll or you could do some of the um, uh, some of the some of the features will work uh, automatically or it'll just roll the damage separate but I know for some people, when they roll Divine Smite, they want to do it on a critical hit, and it's you can't really roll a critical hit on the when you roll the spell sometimes unless you you know are holding you know control or shift or however you have it hotkeyed if you're using mid quality life to you know fast forward your rolls. So I did two different options for them to do Divine Smite. So um, I had their sword. I added a extra thing to the details to apply an additional 2d8 radiant damage so if they wanted to roll with this sword specifically to say okay I know uh, I did it mainly for for enemies that we know for sure that they're actually gonna get um, you know the radiant damage might actually be effective against we we created it this way uh, and then we also uh, added a effect that we could just apply the 2d8 or 3d8 if it's like an undead uh, or if they say we wanted to cast it as a second level spell slot because they currently only have up to second level spells so I only uh, just did up to first and second level and as they get higher I'll create additional ones 
uh, once they start getting more and more spell slots. But that was that was the easiest way for me to figure out how to apply Divine Smite, especially with the effects. I mean, it's it's so easy to you know click click the ability, and then when they when they roll their attack and get a hit, and let's say they got critical hit, and then so then they would get to roll all those uh, big big damage dice, and so yeah, that that extra d8 really mattered because then they got two and then of course they got a one so um and then you know it's as simple as turning the effect off and then uh we pretty much uh just said that we would just keep an eye on their spell slots because they're this this person's really really good about monitoring their spell slots so it's it's really easy to uh to turn on and off because i was i was looking for a way for to make an effect cost a spell slot uh, and it was it was kind of easier said than done because I'm activating the effects in uh, not to reduce one of you know I, I I could I could if I really wanted to create like an attribute up here at the top and make it like spell slot like level one spell slot and then I could say have my divine smite you know every time I activated it I'd take one off and it would minus off the minus off the spells but this just seemed like the the easiest way, and then also lay on hands was a little bit difficult. So uh, we we pretty much ended up going down to uh, creating it. We created it. To, we did it two ways that how we're gonna do it. So uh, because you know it has just a, a a pool of of attributes. So we created a we created an attribute on the front uh, that it's just the primary value. We're gonna do it in blocks of five. And so every time it activates it, it will remove five. It'll take five from the primary value, and it will do five healing. Uh, if say we needed to do, uh, I, I had a, I had the other option of potentially creating multiple lay on hands and just creating the ability multiple times, and it could say you know you could do lay on hands parentheses five, lay on hands parentheses, parentheses ten, thirty five. However, however you're going to do it. So if you're going to do like a bulk bulk lay on hands, so if say she was going to do the lay on hands feature to Bjorn here, she's just going to roll just to do normal, and it added it did the five healing, and then it bumped his health up uh, five. So and then he got to he got to a little bit extra health, and so and then it'll reduce the five from the uh, the marker there. So that was the that was the easiest way that we we figured out because I we. I had them get on with me, and we were we were both kind of sit there and played around with it to see what would be the the easiest and most uh, effective way to um, get the get the abilities to work the right way. And uh, I was trying to accommodate to, for everybody to see what would uh, be the most efficient. Uh, I also uh, we were like we were when I was with a lot of my players, we were because we we're getting ready to switch to Foundry, and so uh, some do and some do not like the um, cursor that's playing in the background. So I found a module that lets you turn it off if you don't want it, um, and it was the um, cursor hider. Uh, when you go into the settings of it, uh, it has an option to, uh, it defaults to the alt key, uh, which I thought was really inconvenient, or sorry, I think it's, it defaults to the, uh, the control key. Um, and I found it really, it was like control and C, I think, or it was, it was, I can't, it was just like a hot key, but it was whenever, when you did it, it actually opened up your character sheet, which was another thing that we figured out because, uh, the, the one player that's the, the tank really likes to look at their character sheet. And, uh, they were like, it'd be really cool if there was a way that you could, you know, you know, click something or do something to get the character sheet to pull up. And as I was messing with that cursor menu, I actually figured out a way you could do that. If you actually hold control C, it will literally, uh, or sorry, if you do, um, I want to say it was a, what is it? It was a, it's like a, I'm losing my mind now. That's not control C. Uh, I'm trying to think what the uh, button was. Yeah, I think it's uh, uh, just typing C on the keyboard just pulls up your character sheet. It's just like a quick, quick way to do it. So, I mean, you literally just tap C uh, and you get it. Uh, I'm sorry, I was a little delayed. My dog jumped on me. Uh, but with the um, with the cursor, uh, I I don't mind it being hidden. But you can actually show when all your when all your players are when all your players are on. 
uh, it will show whether or not if you have their cursor off. The way I have it set up, I just have just the button above tab. I can't remember what the little squiggly line is. But whenever, if I had a, a player on like that and I had the cursor on, I could, you know, do whatever. I was like, all right, hey, come on, go over here. Or I could toggle off or I could, you know, go into like drawing mode and go like, okay, and you're going to go, you know, which you're going to, you know, come. God, I cannot draw an arrow. And then, you know, like you'll go here or do whatever. And then that's, you can, you know, alert things that way. And then uh, I'm going to play around with the pings, the, that one module later tonight when I get to work, just to kind of test some other different modules out. But that's about it. Uh, at least that's kind of a, a good showcase to how to go over some of the Paladin abilities. Uh, that that was just some of the the best ways I could figure out with especially with the with the auras and then doing like some divine smite and then also with the uh, doing the lay on hands features uh, to be able to make it the most quick and less back and forth having to go in and out of your care sheet and do things like that I, I feel like that was a, a good kind of middle ground that we kind of came up with but. Uh, that should about do it. Uh, in the meantime, if you need anything, just let me know. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, shoot me a comment and have a good day.